Do you want to know the apps that you can use in primary care to help your patients, help your learning, and maybe even save you some money? We're going to have a look at those today. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. This is the first time we're meeting. I'm Dr. Gandalf of EGP Learning, where I look at supporting you with technology-enhanced primary care and learning. And in this episode, I'm going to look at the various different tools, websites, and resources you can use to help yourself, whether you're a nurse, a pharmacist, a physician associate, or another allied healthcare professional in primary care, and look at those ones that will help you in your practice, help you with patients, help you with your learning, and also help you, particularly, maybe even save you some money. If you're interested in looking at more of this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you can follow all of our content either on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook or Twitter channels and stuff, all at EGP Learning. And as always, guys, subscribe, comment, share. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. Shall we begin? Hi, EGP Learners. Welcome to this session where I talk about the various different apps and things that you can use to try and help in your work in terms of primary care, particularly from a nurse or plus, as I like to call it, so other healthcare professional role and things. And um, so, as we mentioned earlier, I'm Dr. Gandalf and I also run the company EGP Learning. And we're going to go through a few different things to help. So, in terms of the, the main things that I wanted to focus on today, so I'm going to look at the various different tools that you can use to help in your practice, tools you can use to help patients, tools you can help to help your own learning and particularly the tools that can help you. So I'll split it up into those four sections. I hope you find this interesting and useful. So first of all, let's have a look at the tools to help you in practice. So there's a variety of different things that you can use. Um, the first one I'm going to suggest is my own website called EGP Learning, which I'm going to show you here. So this is effectively the website, as you can see, pretty clean and things, and a variety of different resources that you can use. So there's the blog, um, Dr. Gandalf's Ramblings. Yes, I do tend to ramble sometimes. But the main thing that many of you probably want to look at is the resources page. And as you can see, this is split into a variety of different categories, things like cardiovascular interests, um, healthcare, uh, in terms of GI, all the other kind of things and stuff. So um, lots of different resources that you can access and use. Um, so if we go to, for example, my favorite page, which is the resources general page, um, there we go. So, and effectively what this is, is a list of the variety of different resources that I like to use in clinical care. Lots of different things and useful things that I've covered in previous um, posts and stuff. So things like um, nice um, um, guidance. Um, MedStopper, a really good website that I've shown before on the YouTube platform um, and various other kind of links to things. And then as you saw as well, um, some various different links to like cardiovascular, endocrine, musculoskeletal, neurology, um, respiratory, various different things. And particularly, I've even got a section there for resilience and self-help. So always worth having a look at that kind of page and things to see what you can think of. So as you can see, clicking on it there, lots of different things and stuff. There's other kind of things as well. So learning resources, organizations you may want to contact, advice and support and things. I've got a page on there about the various different apps that you can consider using and stuff. And also I've got a link to something I call the EGP Learning Support Pack, which particularly if you're working in primary care, um, can be useful in terms of a link to a, basically a, an openable um, browser, as well as what I like to use, which is my intro pack. Um, so something that's a text expander to make documentation stuff and easier. If you're interested, have a look and things. Anyway, going back to the other kind of resources, there's also the pod blast itself. So many of you are probably listening to it through that particular medium. So I, I also run a podcast that's about health technology and primary care. And that's what this whole channel is about. So feel free to sign up to those. Anyway, enough about me. Really good app that I would highly recommend to many of you is something called the BNF or the CBNF. So for those that know about it, it's the British National Formulary. It is effectively the most definitive resource in terms of prescribing information that we use in primary care and in terms of medicine in the UK. Um, lots of information that's contained in its book. Um, the slight downside is, is having the book, in my view. Um, it's unfortunately out of date the moment it's printed, and um, it's pretty hefty to carry around and small print and all that kind of stuff and searching for it. So much more complicated. Well, what's the alternative? Use the app. 
It's free to download. It's free to use as long as you use an NHS.net email account. And effectively, this will give you access to the, the information in the BNF itself. And you can easily switch towards the children's BNF version as well, just by click of a button. Um, do make sure you're in a Wi-Fi area when you download it for the first time. It's quite a large data file. Um, and when you do update and stuff, it's important that you do that over a Wi-Fi connection just to make sure you don't burn through all your data. But I would not deny that this is probably one of the most useful clinical apps that you can use in primary care. You can argue a lot of our clinical systems have this information built into it, but having that portable with you to access no matter where is actually a really valuable resource, particularly for things like home visits, you don't have to carry on the book and things, but also in terms of making sure it's up to date. So a few years ago, actually, they printed the wrong doses for erythromycin, a commonly used antibiotic, and they had to basically send out a paper note to every single person they'd already sent the book to, to say, actually, don't use that information and stuff. So important in terms of making sure you've got the right information and the app allows that to happen. In terms of prescribing, another resource I would suggest, and particularly if you work in the Nottingham area like myself, and that's something called the NOTS APC guidance. So this is the, the area prescribing committee um, is uh, supported by the Nottingham um, City CCG and stuff. And there's lots of really good information, particularly in terms of prescribing in the Nottingham area, what you should prescribe, what you shouldn't prescribe, guidance about how to use those prescriptions. And there's also really good clinical guidelines. The one I probably use the most is the antimicrobial guidance to make sure you're up to date with um, prescribing the right kind of antibiotics for the right conditions and what routes and methods are most important things like sensitivities do change prevalence that kind of thing so in terms of antimicrobial guidance here you can see it here and um, simply so click on that it opens a pdf that's got all the information you can click to particular sections so for example acute sinusitis guidance about what kind of things it can do 90 percent are viral people so actually antibiotics shouldn't really be used for sinusitis that kind of stuff but if you did feel it's important what kind of ones you would need to use and also the course length all that kind of stuff and important considerations really good resource obviously a lot of areas will have their own versions of this and welcome to use those obviously for the nottingham area i would highly recommend using this one there are a lot of general reference websites out there. So there's things like CKS, the Clinical Knowledge Summaries, it's backed up by the information by NICE. There's all the groups like GP Notebook, Patient.info, and Up to Date. These are all really good reference website uses and stuff. And I'm not showing them in more detail on this because some of the websites do take a bit of time to load, particularly Patient.info, whilst I love the content and really good for sharing with patients. It's quite a heavy website and does take a bit of time to load, so it slows down the computers and stuff. But actually, all of these are very good in their own right. They all have their own plus points and negative points. So CKS, I find really good for clear cut information about managing things. A bit hard to search around, I tend to find sometimes. GP Notebook, really good in terms of detailed information about epidemiology, conditions, that kind of stuff. Again, a little bit searching around sometimes to find the right kind of bit that you may need and things. And sometimes the information may not be as accurate in terms of up to date and the kind of things as other kind of areas. Patient.info, really good, easy to use website, great for printing off leaflets for patients and stuff and does link with um, EMIS in particular quite well. Again, my main downside to using that one is the heaviness of the website. It can take a while to load up because of all the ads and stuff that come up with it. Up to date, really good resource, probably the best out of the lot, but does come with a cost attachment, unlike the other ones which are free to use unless you sign up and things and, and may require to sign up and things. But um, up to date does come with a cost on it. Maybe useful if your practice or your federation pays for it, maybe something to consider, um, but really good in terms of what it does. In terms of other tools, well, YouTube, probably the best resource at trying to learn something. It's the easiest way to learn something. How often yourself have you gone off and YouTubed how to fix something or how to do a particular thing? Well, you can do that with YouTube from a clinical perspective as well. Again, just briefly, I'm going to mention the eGP Learning channel and make sure you subscribe to make sure you get all of our content and stuff. Um, but alternate ones, if you're interested, Aurora Med really good learning resource um, run by a doctor called um, Amon Aurora, uh, who basically helps GPs and um, to pass their exams and stuff. But the reason why the YouTube channel is really valuable is it's got really short snippets of information about clinical things. So for example, how to manage overactive bladder, um, what to do in a case of um, epilepsy, that kind of stuff, really good information and stuff, short information dumps that you can actually use quite quickly to do some learning and stuff. Or if you've got a question and things, I do find his channel really good. And um, the RCGP also has its own YouTube channels and stuff where they share a lot of information and things. And as a member, it's a free resource. In particular, there's also their podcast, which I would really recommend from a clinical perspective. If you needed some learning information and things. So, for example, if you want an update on how to manage fibroids, dead easy to access, free to use. Go for it, guys. 
alternate things. Um, one of some of you will remember a while back I did a video about a website called MedCalc, MDCalc. Um, really good website. And the reason why I like this is it's basically about clinical calculators. Why is that useful? Well, often you come across conditions where you want to have a better idea of the risk that you may have to deal with with that particular patient and stuff. And MD Calc allows you to get those. So as you can see, just from the home page, there's a variety of things that you can access. So things like the creatinine clearance, Shad's Vask, um, has blood scores, all those kind of things. Um, lots of other kind of ones, well score for PEs. And there's got the separate one for well scores for DVT. And, you know, just clicking on these gives you the information about the actual calculator and that kind of thing. Um, and then dead easy to use. You click. Um, put the information, it gives you the score at the end of it. The other really cool thing about this, it's got the pearls and pitfalls about using these scores and also why you should use them and the times you should use them and a bit of information about them and that kind of stuff. The website's really good. The app's even better. It's much quicker and stuff. And I find it really helpful and handy. Again, visit situations for those mobile workers, really valuable because sometimes these calculators are not in your clinical system and stuff. So having access to them through this route can be really useful. Another one that I've covered previously, Lab Test Online. So this is a really valuable resource in terms of checking up against pathology information um, when you've got you know test results that you're not quite sure on what the significance that may mean, that kind of stuff. Go to Lab Test Online, type it in, it will bring it up. Or if there's particular conditions like hyperparathyroidism, you know if you can't remember all the various different causes and you want some further information to support you, really good way of checking that out. And um, I do like the website. And a really useful tip for those of you working on System 1, unfortunately I can't show you through this interface because I don't have access to it here at home, um, but whenever you're filing results, there's a little blue eye next to some of the results. If you double click on that, that will take you straight to the relevant page in Lab Test Online. So that's a pro tip for you guys, particularly for those who are using System 1. I hope there's something similar to EMIS. I don't use EMIS, so I'm afraid I can't give you that information. If you guys know about it, feel free to put a comment on the page. Alternately, nnt.com. Uh, so I love this website. It's a great one in terms of clinical information and evidence-based practicing. It's a website that basically tells you about the evidence behind the kind of medicine that you may want to use with patients and stuff. Again, I've covered this in a video, so I'm not going to go into more detail at this point. Do check that out and you'll be able to see the little card at the top at the moment to show you how to do that and stuff. So feel free to click on that and have a look. Um, skin is a common challenge I find in terms of my prenatal practice and having resources to help you uh, understand the, you know, the skin conditions that patients may attend with can be really helpful, particularly from a visual perspective. And two tools I would really recommend considering. One is something called Dermnet NZ. So this is a website um, created in New Zealand where they've got lots of information about skin conditions, that kind of stuff. Loads of valuable pictures and that kind of stuff to show you how to have a look. And so let's have a little look at it, shall we? So this is the website as it loads up. And as you can see, um, various different imagery and stuff about what they want to do and how they want to help you and things, but simply put to search for a condition. So let's go for, I don't know, chicken pox. Okay. Chicken box. Okay. So type that in, wait for it to work over. And um, so apologies guys, the reason why my internet connection is a bit slow is because I'm recording at the same time. So it's using some of my um, PCs um, data and things. Um, so there you go. You can see that it's come up and in terms of the chicken pox. And if we click on that, different information. What is chicken pox? What do you get? And then visual imagery of what the condition can look at. So you can use this either to confirm a diagnosis if you need some extra resources and things, but also sharing it to patients can be really valuable in terms of how you can help them understand the conditions and stuff. Obviously, this is a New Zealand based website and stuff. The alternative that you may want to consider is the BAD website, the British Association of Dermatology website. So the link again is on the, on the, on the channel and stuff and feel free to use that. Um, if as a nurse you're looking at supporting patients with their inhaler techniques and figuring out which inhalers they need to use have a look at right breathe really good website that looks at the various different inhalers that people may use and how to get the best out of them i like using that website sometimes for some patients and things um next up tools to help your patients well the best one i would recommend if you're practicing in the uk would definitely be the nhs.uk website lots of good quality information and it's validated which is the main thing so in terms of sharing it quickly and effectively particularly through things like your social media channels and stuff you're not going to go wrong because it is validated information and stuff and it's a great place to signpost patients to get validated information lots of fake news out there and useful to get that kind of right content as a nurse, you may be a me member of the Royal College of Nursing, and actually they have a really good learning platform built into their website, and you're able to access that as a member and stuff. So really good quality things in there. 
Important to know about a new thing coming into effect very shortly, if not already accessible by many patients, that's the NHS app. So this is the front door to the NHS systems, and that's gonna become prevalent as time goes on because it goes out for full release in the next couple of months. With that comes access to the NHS app library, and apps are increasingly gonna be part of primary care. Um, really good resource to find apps that you can actually suggest to patients to use. Again, they've been validated. And the organization that does that is this group called Orca, um, and, and they effectively go through and validate a lot of apps and, and you know, basically do the safety checks to make sure it's sensible, safe, and give you an idea of what the pros and cons are for recommending those apps for patient use. Good resource, increasingly is gonna be part of our workload and stuff, so having these tips are helpful. You may want to give some physiotherapy advice to patients. Why? Well, often patients come with simple injuries, you just need a little bit of rehab, or potentially access to your rehabilitation may be quite prolonged. So getting them to start doing some of the pre-work can be useful and effective, and more importantly, to better recovery. Resources to help you, so the ARC website, again, links here. Or um, The one I tend to use a little bit more often is something called Summit Medical Groups. I'm gonna show you the website here. Um, and this is an American group that's created this kind of information. There's lots of different that they have and as you can see various different conditions but searching for the one that you may want so for example if I was to search for an Achilles tendon injury and it'll give me the exercises both in written and you can click on the images to make them bigger and you get the pictures to show the patients how to do the exercises at home good information quality information and dead easy to give to patients and um, sleep difficulties are a massive challenge that patients may often present with and often drives a lot of ill health as well, particularly from a mental health perspective. My favorite app for helping with this is something called Sleepio and it's something I've even used myself. It's an app that basically looks at giving you targeted sleep advice and it then gives you that in a format that means that you can use it practically and stuff. There is an added part if you want to pay for it, which is the CBT for insomnia. Again, one of the most effective treatments for tackling proper insomnia rather than relying on medications. Um, but you don't have to pay for that. The, the app is free in terms of its basic use of that sleep hygiene advice and stuff. And rather than giving the person a sheet with, you know, this is what you need to do in previous sleep, I actually find this so much more effective because it's targeted to the challenges that they may have. So I used it when I wasn't sleeping properly when my kids were waking up and things. Really good constructive advice. I kind of knew a lot of it, but having it clear cut, this is actually the things you need to focus on, so much more effective, so easy to use. Um, alternative ones, Headspace and Calm. I've covered Headspace earlier in the channel in, at the beginning of the year and stuff, so I'm not gonna go into more detail about these. And particularly from a psychological support method, they can be effective. I'll be clear that they're not um, prescribable treatments as yet, but they are really good tools for helping patients when they are struggling, particularly with regards to the simple things like stress management, but also preparation for more complex things like CBT and that kind of stuff. It teaches the principles of some of those aspects and particularly um, with regards to headspace stuff, there's even a package on there if you want it um, about preparing for flight journeys and that kind of stuff. Useful for the holiday period coming up, particularly if you're trying not to prescribe benzodiazepines and stuff. But not all patients can use technology effectively and easily. Some will say, I, I struggle to use a phone or struggle to use a website, that kind of stuff. How can you help them get onto that digital literacy platform kind of thing? Well, a really good website is Learn My Way. It is a website dedicated to try and helping patients use digital tools more effectively and more simply. Talk through it really nice and simply. Okay, yeah, it's using a website to teach you how to use a website but actually it does it really well. And I really recommend using that for those patients that you feel need that extra support. There's a great way of signposting them to tools. How about helping with your own learning? So actually there's loads of support out there for trying, GP trying to do their learning and stuff, but actually in terms of nurses and stuff, there's not as much stuff. Uh, and actually I wanted to show you a few things that can help. My biggest tip, use a notepad app. So there's a variety of different ways you can do this. Um, the one I would recommend is something called Evernote. So some of you would have heard me talk about this before as if you come to my sessions. Um, but alternative ones are easily are things like Google Drive or OneNote. And um, we covered these in our top five apps that me and Andy did at the beginning of the year. And you're welcome to look at that video and I'll signpost you to the end of that, at the end of this to that. Alternately, how about using some systems in practice? So a growing tool is something called TeamNet. This is um, developed by a company called Clarity. I'm just going to show you what mine looks like. Um, so this is the Clarity website, and then this is the actual interface when you go into it. So it's kind of like a task management repository of stuff. Lots of power in terms of the way that this works. The interface could be better, if I'm being honest. It's not by any means an effective aesthetic modern interface, 
but it does the job and it does the job better than most other systems that I've come across at this point. Um, so definitely worth a look at in terms of what it can do. Integrates really well if you're a Clarity ePortfolio user and stuff because it links all your learning that you do through this directly to your portfolio. So it saves having to duplicate stuff. And it's really good at keeping on track of your mandatory training. So in terms of what you need to do, meetings that are coming up, you can look at the minutes, that kind of stuff. I'm not going to show you those. But you can also bring in feeds from other areas. So, so a lot of our updates from the Greater Nottingham CCG, for example, and other areas like the LMC, NHS England, all come through this one unified feed. And every time I click on them, it, it records that I've read it. So it's really good for helping me keep on track of what I need to do and that kind of thing. Cam Scanner, again, another app I covered earlier in the year. Um, really good way of keeping a track of all your um, uh, certificates that you may have gone through and that kind of stuff, complaints um, uh, and compliments. Important to keep track of those for your own appraisal and learning. Um, and it's basically a PDF creating app, but it works so well and it does the job so well. Yes, it does store the information in the cloud if you want it to, don't have to. Um, and I just make sure that if there is any patient identifiable stuff, obviously that's blurred out or blocked out before I take the photo and stuff so it doesn't upload. But actually main resources for using it for certificates for when I go to events, learning things, you know, conferences, that kind of stuff. Mainly so I don't lose them. I'm really bad at losing paper. And if you're like me, feel free to use this app or there's others out there. But my particular preference is Cam Scanner and the link's on the page if you want it. Social media can be a really good tool and I've covered this in other videos and stuff. So have a look at those if you want to. But in particular, if you click on this link, it'll take you to a tool about the, the, the episode that Andy and myself did looking at using social media um, as a clinician and stuff. Important rules to be aware of, but definitely worth a look. If you're actually looking at expanding your skills, have a look at the MedEx app. Now, this is Android only, um, but it's basically an app that allows you to learn clinical skills. It shows you how to do a chest examination. It shows you how to do abdominal examination. It shows you what you're looking for as well. It's a really good, simple app that does the job in terms of helping support your learning from a clinical examination perspective. If you want to test your psychological aspects of it, you know, how good you are with your knowledge and you fancy a bit of a game or pretending to be house, you yeah. know, um, try prognosis your diagnosis at one point ranked the highest health app on the app store um, it's basically a quiz um, to figure out whether or not you can diagnose the conditions like i said if you want to practice being house or if you want to practice your learning definitely a good resource to have a look at and finally tools to help you because you are important and actually being supported is very important um, and there's a variety of different types of tools here um, the one i get asked the most about and people are probably surprised about this is how do I sort out my password? And this is a common problem that people have. So um, working in the NHS, uh, you will probably know your passwords change almost on a monthly basis at times, and it has weird rules about what you should use, what you shouldn't use. Keeping track of it can be an absolute nightmare. And I do mean this. So one way to do this is by keeping a track of it use an app or something like that particular things like notepads app can be used because you can secure those with another layer of protection like a password and as long as you don't forget the master password you're fine um i've created an article that, that covers this kind of stuff in more detail so feel free to have a look at it it's how to protect yourself from cyber attack and it's up on the website there is a link on this um um there is the link on, on this page if you want to have a look at it and stuff, but it goes through all the various different things and tools you can use and, and how to also keep yourself safe and stuff. And um, particular note that I tend to recommend to people is either using something called Color Note, which is, as you can see in the corner there, um, or a, another tool to use is something called LastPass. Um, it's a more dedicated app and has lots of protection involved in it, um, but effectively really good at doing that kind of thing for you. Um, it does come with a slight cost if you want to use LastPass effectively, um, but give it a try. Again, I'm going to mention Headspace and Calm. Whilst you can use these for patients, you can clearly use this for yourself. Mindfulness is a growing trend in terms of making your resilience better. Whether you feel that's good for you or not, I'll let you make that decision and stuff. Um, but have a look. In terms of skills, working in primary care, one of the best skills you can have is to type quicker. How can you do that? Look at Keybar. Really good website that can help you learn to type quicker. It's basically gamifies how to learn to type. So it's maybe speaking plus the Xbox, I guess, in some way. And it basically shows you how to type. And I've, again, I've done a video that shows you how to do this. But as you can see on my screen right now, it's ready to go. So I'm going to give it a try and show you how bad I am on camera. 
uh, and you just type what it says on the screen and as you do it it ranks how quickly you are doing it and things uh, I can promise you I'm a bit better at this than normal but I'm a little bit anxious doing it in front of you guys and it makes your accuracy as well as your speed uh, let's just finish this off uh, and as you can see the more you do it gives you more accurate score so it gives you speed so I can type apparently 37 words per minute and it gives you a score for your session and a score overall and things and that can help you learn to type quicker effectively I do like it and um, in terms of most effective apps, I've covered this earlier, the Nottinghamshire LMC app, uh, I think is probably one of the most useful apps for GPs, but actually particularly if you're working in the Nottingham area as another healthcare professional, actually there's really good resources on here as well. So do give that a try and, and see if that helps in terms of getting you particular information and things. And the last one I'm going to cover, um, the blue light card. So who doesn't like to save money? I know I do. And actually, this is a resource that you can use. Some of you may be aware that you get various discounts for working with the NHS and you can prove that by showing your NHS card and stuff. Well, Blue Light Card's taken that another step further. So as an NHS employee, you can access this. Um, and in terms of doing so, you will get access to so many different kind of resources as well as savings and things. Better to have a look at the website, if I'm being honest, because there's so much on there that you can do. And they run things like competitions to try and drive even more savings for people and things. It's really valuable. Um, and I think in terms of, you know, making cost savings to you in terms of primary care and stuff, lots and lots and lots on there. So definitely have a look at that. The one tip I can say to you is sign up to this if you're interested. Yeah, even on Apple, you can get discounts and stuff. And Apple doesn't give discounts to anyone, really. Um, you do get it as an NHS member. It's the same one, to be fair, but there's lots more other things you can access. I hope you guys have found this useful. I hope that these tips will give you some starting point to try and improve how you're functioning in primary care, whether that's as a practice worker, whether that's within your own clinical knowledge in terms of working with patients, learning or yourself. If there's a particular tool that you found really helpful, mention it to me. Tell me what you think. I'd really be keen for your feedback. So you can either me leave a message on the YouTube um, page or you can contact me on Twitter at EGP Learning or my personal one, which is at Dr. Gandalf. If you want the slides and the links to everything that's on here, um, use the link that's on there. So bit.ly slash EGP Learning Nurse Apps or use the QR code that you can see on screen right now. Just scan that with a barcode and it will take you straight to the thing. Do you need to sign up if you want to access it and things? But once you've done so, you'll get the um, full kind of um, presentation and everything and all the links that come with it. If you want to sign up to any of the platforms, use the link tree slash EGP learning web shortcut that you can see on there. And actually, if you want some more information, um, I mentioned earlier that I've done a few webcasts with my colleague, Dr. Andy Foster, as part of the EGP Learning Podblast, where we covered three topics in particular, social media guidance for clinicians, technology to enhance your CPD collection, and then finally we covered um, the top five GP apps that you can see there. Um, feel free to sign up to those. It's on our YouTube platform. Make sure you subscribe, as I said earlier, to make sure you get all the information, and let us know what you think, guys. And as always, subscribe, comment, share. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. See you later.